And when was the last time you saw an update to software that actually made it better? We're gonna be getting into an update that I think actually did make some things better. They don't claim that they're gonna solve all your problems. The other thing that Canvasys is extremely good at is it uses very, very small clearances. All they're doing now is optimizing and giving you more capabilities with that super simple interface. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinists. And today on Machine Shop Talk, we're gonna be getting into an update that I think actually did make some things better. And that's the new Optimize Roughing Toolpaths with Cloud NC. We're gonna be making this T-cleat part inside this mill, but before we do, let's go upstairs and program it and make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below so make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so one thing that I keep hearing again and again is when people get in touch with me about Cloud NC, because a lot of times that's one of the first times they're seeing this, they wanna know how it really works. Cloud NC, the one thing I really like about them, we use them in the shop, is that they don't claim that they're gonna solve all your problems or you pop in your drawing and you get a program that works 100% every time, away you go. It's not reality and I appreciate that that's kind of the approach that's being taken. So we've been using this here for, I guess, almost a year now. Um, we don't use it for a lot of simple parts. We'll use it for more complicated parts, um, especially things that have a lot of 3D machining in them because I don't know if you guys program a lot, you know, 3D toolpaths. It can be really tricky to get the toolpath to work the way you want to. And I feel like we can burn a lot of time just trying to get, you know, a toolpath to go the way we want it to down an edge. Cloud NC is very, very good for that but we have been using it for some more basic stuff as well when it comes to, hey, I need to make one part. I'm not really too concerned with how long it's gonna take. I just want it to be right. Unfortunately, a lot of those parts, I cannot show you because you know, despite the fact we post a lot of stuff on Instagram and here on YouTube, we do have NDAs that we cannot show. So I got them to send me this file. I got them to make this up for me. This is a T-cleat. I would call it you know, an aerospace C part. But it's got lots of features that are interesting enough and complicated enough that it makes sense to show you what's, you know, new and kind of different with Cloud NC. But full disclosure, this is not my part. As always, the one thing I've said when it comes to Cloud NC that really is important, your setup is really going to determine how well this works. This really is a program that you have to put the effort in first. So we went through, we set up this part. Now, what's new with Cloud NC, there's a new release. One thing that I always say is that, you know, there's a lot of new stuff coming out all the time from Cloud NC. It is a product that is being supported with the Camasets product. There's a new thing that came out called Optimized Roughing. Roughing, if you looked at it six months ago, when we made a video, it did some weird stuff. Nothing was wrong, but the way a computer thinks about, you know, AI thinks about programming roughing compared to how a programmer programs roughing, they're a little different. So what this optimized roughing did is it makes the Camasys product program more like you or I would, you know, at least a semi-competent programmer. If you can call me semi-competent, that's, I guess, a bonus. But it comes out a lot more like you or I would program, which to me seems a bit more efficient. But let's take a look. So we've got our part set up here. You can see this is our nice, lovely T-cleat. Um, what we're gonna do is in our op one, we're gonna go through and we're gonna mill down just the top of this part, get this whole features done, and then we're gonna flip it into soft jaws to do the whole second side. So when we go through here, we're actually gonna pop up what's happening with this as we go along so you can see how this reacts, also how it looks here in uh, the file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my tool pass just for that first operation. So if we look here, you can see what we're gonna be doing. Again, I just loaded this up into uh, MasterCam. So you can see, I just used my Cam Assist Clown NC to make this work. But I already did that before. You can see it in the previous video if you wanna see how that aspect works. I really wanna show you the machining here. So what we did, I'm gonna go back into my tool pass. 
is this now spit out our tool paths. So of course, first tool, we have our facing. So let's just turn on our facing. So our first tool, tool one, is gonna go ahead and just face down our sock. We are using a two inch face mill to do that. Again, we set up all these tools previously in Cloud NC Cam Assist with our default tool library so it knows what to pull from. So tool one is gonna go ahead and do our facing. So now we're gonna go on into our second set of tool paths. These are the next gen roughing. So what this is gonna do, this is actually doing one, two, three, four, a bunch of tool paths here, but you can see what's gonna happen. So let's go through them one by one. I'm gonna turn this all off. I'm gonna turn on just our dynamic. So what we're gonna do is it's gonna go through with our tool two. Our tool two is a half inch end mill. It's gonna go through and rough out everything it can. So it's gonna go around the outside of the part, you know, just like, you know, your typical Opti rough and master cam will work, uh, that dynamic milling. And it's also gonna go in and rough out this interior portion. Move on to tool three. This is going to be our quarter inch uh, end mill. This is gonna go in and rough out that pocket. And it's also gonna go back and do all the little cusps. Again, one thing that Cloud NC's Camasys is really good for is it keeps track of using rest milling without you having to. So rest milling, obviously, if you do a tool path and you do a rest mill tool path on it, it's gonna go back and clean up whatever the other one didn't. Cloud NC is very, very good at getting that done. Sometimes too good, we'll get into that, but it's gonna go ahead and rough all that out, basically cleaning up everything that didn't get touched. After that, we're gonna move on to tool four. This is gonna be a one eighth ball. So you can see what that's doing in here is it's gonna go through and start adding in all our radii. So again, this is kind of like a waterline tool path. Um, this is calling it a 3D high speed area rest roughing. Again, you can go through and change anything you want in here. You can see there's a lot of up and down in this, a lot of retract. Personally, I don't think I could do much better given the kind of tool path we're dealing with here. So I'm gonna leave it. The other thing that Cam Assist is extremely good at is it uses very, very small clearances because it keeps track of where that part is as you machine it. It can be a bit frightening, but we're gonna leave that tool path. It's gonna be just fine. After that, we're gonna move on to tool five. This is going to go in with our same quarter inch end mill again. This is kind of the floor finishing. So you can see it's going in. It's just gonna do your basic pocket tool path, but it wants to make sure that floor is exactly where it needs to be. After that, we're gonna move on to our tool six. This is going to be finishing the rest of that flat with that 1 8 ball mill. Now, if you'll notice, one thing it's doing is it's jumping back and forth between tools. You know, I called that tool six, even though that will, it was technically originally our tool four. That's okay. What it's doing is it's trying to do this in steps to make sure that if it does a flat and there's a cusp, it's gonna go in and clean it up after. It can seem like it's wasting time, but I will kind of argue because that was my thought originally as well. There is kind of a logic behind it and it works out. And at the end of the day, it's not taking that much more time than if you did it the other way. Personally, I haven't really seen a big challenge with that there. After that, we're gonna go and finish the walls with our tool seven. This is a uh, 3 8 flat end mill. So you can see we're just going to finish that wall right around the outside there to make sure we have a good gripping surface when we flip this into soft jaws. After that, of course, we have to put some holes in here. Now, this is one of the coolest things is that Cloud NC Cam Assist picks up the holes, it automatically spots them, it automatically drills them, and it automatically chamfers them. Pretty cool stuff. Um, again, it's gonna depend on your tool setup. If you have a hole that obviously is not a drill, sometimes it will go try to helix those if you don't have an appropriate drill in there. But we do have an appropriate drill in there, so we're gonna do that. First of all, we're gonna go and spot all these holes. So it's gonna go spot the holes, you know, fairly straightforward. After that, we are going to go through and drill them. So this is gonna use a peck drill. This is one thing I was fairly happy to see. Last time I ran this, it automatically tried to plunge drill, you know, just straight plunge. We use jobber drills. This time I have configured it so it does try to come up as a peck drill first. So it's gonna go and peck drill these holes as far as they need to go. Um, obviously these holes don't need to go all the way through the sock, so it's not gonna do that. After that, we're gonna use a waterline tool path. So this is gonna go in and finish all this area here. Now, again, one thing Cloud NC Camasys does like to do is it likes to finish things a lot. 
again, semi-rough, rough finish. You get to decide how much of this you want it to do. If I don't like that it goes and it puts five different tool paths to clean up the same area, I can delete the first four and just keep the fifth. If I know this isn't critical or I know that I'm using good tooling, you can go and change all this stuff as you want once it's done. So that's gonna go and finish all that water line. And of course, before we take this out of the machine, we have to deburr. This is obviously automatic deburring, just like it always works in Cloud NC. You can see that it's gonna go around the outside of the perimeter of the part. You can see that in this area here, because we have a radius that leads in, it's not gonna to try to chamfer something that doesn't need it. And it's gonna chamfer all my holes. So now that that's done, we are going to go ahead and flip this into some soft jaws. Now, George and I went and made some soft jaws for this, which I'm going to pull up for you here. Let's flip over to my Op2 G55. I'm going to turn off all my tool paths so you can see. So you can see we're just holding this in some standard soft jaws. We made these out of aluminum. Um, we just nested the part in there, deleted the part, and machined it. So after the soft jaws are done, we flip our part into it, and let's take a look at what we're going to do. So first, our tool one is going to be our facing. So our facing here, we're just hogging off the remainder of that material. We're using that same two inch face mill. Not that big a deal. After that, we move on to our tool two, and this is our roughing next gen. This is that optimized roughing that's really gonna show you what's different with this. So previously, if we had run this, you'd probably see it go and try to clean up this part with five or six different tools. Um, not the worst thing in the world, but not necessary. In this case, this is programming it just like probably I would with an OptiRough or a dynamic milling, adaptive clear, whatever you want to call it in Mastercam. Obviously, it's your, your OptiRough. This is going to go ahead and do that. It's actually using a high-speed dynamic OptiRest to do this because, again, it's calculating how much material is left on there from each operation. And you can see it's going to use that same half-inch end mill to do this entire surface. One thing we did use is we used a, an end mill that was too long here. We just had this tool in there and I said, run it. You're gonna hear it sing a bit. Obviously it's not optimal. We usually would have chucked this up a lot more, but it still made it work. The one thing I did find is that the tool pass in this, uh, the speeds and feeds, while they were absolutely correct, they were a little bit conservative. We're feeding at 63 inches a minute, 10,600 uh, RPM. It's fine. I, it's very effective for what it's doing, especially because it's using that same speed and feed for the entire uh, roughing. You know, for the larger areas, it definitely could have gone faster. For the smaller areas, you want it to be slower so it's not banging off the part. I think it's just about there. And it's certainly better than it was. It's, uh, it's programming the way I would if I want to press a button and walk away. It's safe. It's stable. It has that kind of process stability where it's getting a good blend of how long it's going to take versus um, how accurate the part is and how process stable it is. Remember, if you're running parts all day super fast, you're going to break tools and then you got to go and change the tools and then you scrap a part. The balance between process stability and speed is kind of where the magic lies in machining and it's up to you as to which way you want to go. At the end of the day, I could go change my feeds and speeds in here and just run it. However, I wanted to keep it exactly as it was just to show you guys what it spits out. So after it's done all that roughing for that part, we are gonna move on and do a little bit more roughing. So that was our majority of it. We're moving on to another tool path technically here with our half inch end mill. And this is gonna go in and start milling all our steps. So obviously we wanna get that T-cleat to come down on the angles just like this. This is going and starting to rough in all the steps for the ball nose. Pretty straightforward. It's also doing a little bit of floor roughing. This worked really, really well. Um, it was feeding faster than when it was roughing. So, you know, it did kind of what I would do because it's a smaller cut. After that, it's going to pull up our tool three, which is our 3 8 end mill. And this is going to go and just start pulling down all those steps a little bit more. Basically making it so when we go in with that ball, ball nose end mill after, we don't need to spend all day getting that to where it needs to be. After that, we're gonna hop over to our flats, which is our tool four. We're gonna pull up our 3 16 end mill. This is going to finish this top section here. I honestly can't tell you why it's doing it with a 3 16 end mill. 
in reality, I would have probably changed this and just used, you know, my three eighths to do this because it's just finishing that top section. For sake of illustration, we put the three sixteenths in there and we ran it. And it still worked. Also with that tool four, we're gonna go and finish the flats. Now this is going around those flats, trying to get into those flat areas where those radius come up, making sure that everything as it should be. I believe it's using this because it's calculating it off the radius of that internal corner. So it's trying to get in as close as it can to finish that flat as to where it should be. Remember, Cam Assist works off your model. It's trying to make your part as accurately, accurately as it can to that model. If you want it to take less time, maybe you put a bigger radius in there. Maybe it's not important, that's up to you. Now we're gonna move on to our tool five. We are gonna pull up a quarter inch end mill. This is just going to finish those little flats there. But while we have that end mill out, we're also gonna go ahead and finish the insides of these pockets. Now, if you look, we actually didn't neck this end mill back far enough. So you're gonna see a little rub up near the top. Again, this is just a demo, so we left it. Uh, in reality, we would have necked that ML back or used something with more flutes. But you can see even with that quarter inch ML hanging out that far, our finish was really, really good. Also, it's gonna go with that quarter inch and it's going to finish those walls. Again, just cleaning them up, making them look nice. Also with that tool, because we have those radii on the inside there, it is going to go and rough those in. Now, this is something that I may have used a quarter inch ball nose for, or whatever that radius is. I probably would have done this a little different. However, this is an effective way to do it. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't check to see if that is an oddball radius on the inside there. This may have been the only good way to get that radius. You know, if it's not a nominal size, you may need to use a, a ball nose to do it. Uh, this, technically, I had this set up as a bull nose, which is why it's trying to 3D with it. I just left it. It is a square corner, so you're going to see a little bit of uh, steps in there, but you can see that it's doing what it's supposed to do. After this, we're going to pull up our tool eight, which is our half inch ball nose, and you can see it is going to go and finish these angled portions. Also, while it does that, it is going to finish these other angled portions. You can see that this is actually a very, very fast tool path. Um, you know, I may have taken a lot longer on this than it did, but the finish is good. You can see everything turned out the way it was supposed to. Um, I was very impressed with this tool path because these are one of those ones where I probably would have spent a lot of time messing around with it. And it was, like I said, two clicks. That tool path at least was completely done. So now we're gonna move on to our tool nine, which is our 1 8 ball nose. So this 1 8 ball nose, it just wants to go and finish this little area in here. Again, this is calculating that based on the fact that a half inch could not do that radius. So it's gonna go just do those two little cusps on either side of this part. After that, we are gonna move on to our tool 10, which is our deburring. And of course, every time we do a part, we have to deburr it. Let's pull that up. It's gonna go and deburr all our holes. Also, it's gonna deburr the top of the part there. Fairly straightforward. So in conclusion, guys, I just wanted to give you guys the kind of update on where we were with Cloud NC and some of the updates. One thing that really keeps me involved with Cloud NC is the fact that it is constantly being updated. You know, we don't have a five axis mill, but they do have full three plus two. Um, even for their master cam and their fusion, this is software that is being constantly updated constantly improved upon, not just for the sake of improving on it. You know, we all know software is that release, release every year and you gotta go find all the buttons again. The simplicity is key to making this work. They know that and that seems to be their focus. All they're doing now is optimizing and giving you more capabilities with that super simple interface. In any case, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little tour and update through Cloud NC's Cam Assist for Mastercam. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.